Brother Christopher, thank you so much for being here. What does it mean to be a missionary of charity brother? Well, to me, it means that God has called me to a very special uh, way of life. It's a tremendous privilege and a great honor that God has called me to love and to serve them in the distressing disguise of the poorest of the poor. And why this particular community, the Missionaries of Charity, why this charism? I think that um, in my early adulthood, God was leading me to this particular kind of life through many experiences I had. Uh, I, my heart just began to grow for the poor through the years after I left college. I understand that you're a local vocation from here in Los Angeles. How did that happen that you were called to become a missionary charity brother after college? I was working in downtown Los Angeles in the early 1980s. And at that time, there weren't many homeless people except around the downtown LA area. And as I would go to work and back every weekday, my heart started to just feel for the plight of these poor homeless people and the many poor immigrants that I would see every day in and out of my office. If there was one thing you wanted to share with our viewers, what would it be? The one thing that comes to my mind right now is to take the time to be present to one another, especially when somebody is suffering or has experienced some type of poverty in their life. The problem in our society, especially in America, is that we're too busy, as Mother Teresa would often say, we're always so busy with projects and things we have to do, we forget, we don't take the time to be lovingly present to one another. Did you meet Mother Teresa? I met her about five times, and the last time I was privileged to speak with her for about 10 minutes. What impressed you most about being in her presence? What impressed me the most was how human she was and how approachable. It didn't, it didn't dawn on me when I was speaking to her that I was speaking with a living saint. I was just speaking with another person. What do you get out of being a missionary of Charity Brother? What has been most rewarding for you? It's hard to pinpoint because there's so many rewards in this life. Just to get to know the poor, to get to relate to them, is a tremendous uh, gift that I have in this life. To be part of an international congregation that has the same mission. I've traveled a number of times uh, because my superiors wanted me to, and I just feel so privileged to be part of this movement of Mother Teresa to show the world that the poor really matter in the eyes of God. Tell us about the Missionary of Charity Brothers all over the world. I understand that there's eight of you here in this community at present in Los Angeles, but you're all over the world. Well, we have several communities in Latin America and Haiti, Mexico City, Guatemala, Peru, two in Colombia. We also have about maybe five communities in Africa and several countries, a couple who are opening up a third one now in Europe. We have several in the Far East and in Korea, and we have quite a few in India because that's where we started. What type of ministry work do you do here in Los Angeles? Well, our main ministry is that we run a day center for homeless young adults on the other block on Alvarado Terrace. We, we, we provide a place to a home for a short time during the week where they can take a shower, have a change of clothes, be provided with a full meal given by different parishes in the diocese where they have actually feel loved and safe for a while. And also we do street ministry on the weekends. We go out with our volunteers who we call co-workers mm -hmm. and we get to know the homeless on the streets in the downtown area, give them a sandwich, but also spend time with them, as I've said before, the importance of being present in a loving way to them. Is there a story that you could tell us a success story about someone who perhaps lived on the streets and now they've made it into the mainstream? There was a woman who used to live in an alley about a half a mile from here. We would visit her every single Saturday. And before I tell you how her life has improved, I want to share with you this quick story. Uh, she told me one Saturday when I was giving her a sandwich that the next Saturday, she would celebrate her 50th birthday. So I told myself I would remember and come back with a little birthday cake. Well, the following Saturday, I completely forgot about it. And one of the volunteers came up to me and said, you know, brother, you forgot. I felt really bad inside. 
and the volunteer told me, wait, let's wait a little while, I'll go to a local store and I'll get something. So after about a 20 minute wait, he brought an angel's food cake, put some candles on it, got a birthday card for an eight year old child, changed, crossed it out and put 50 on it. And we went to her little uh, shack and gave her the cake and the card. And when she saw it, she began to cry profusely. And she told us that no one had celebrated her birthday in 25 years. And, sure, and about a few years after that, she decided to make the transition. She was getting so ill on the streets. Now she's living in a recovery program and she's uh, helping out at a, uh, uh, a restaurant in Santa Monica and really making an improvement in her life. And we keep in touch with her quite often. Please share with us about Father Andrew. He was a Jesuit priest who was co-founder of the Missionary Charity Brothers along with Mother Teresa. Well, as you know, Mother Teresa started the Missionary Charity Brothers back in 1963. After a couple years with very few vocations, she decided it might be better to have a male as general superior of the brothers. And she prayed and asked our Lord, please show me who would be a good general superior. One day this Jesuit priest, uh, an Australian who was stationed in India, decided to do some of his retreat or experience with the poor time with Mother Teresa. And he fell in love with the work of Mother. And one thing led to another. Eventually, he was given permission by the Vatican and by his superiors to leave the Jesuits and become our general. And since then, we've grown quite a fit, bit in number to about 400 brothers. What does it take to be a missionary of charity brother? What are the qualifications? Well, the first qualification that comes to my mind is to have this tremendous love for the poor, to, to, to have a loving relationship with God through service to the poor. Another quality is to be healthy in mind and, and uh, body, and also to have a good, strong spiritual life. Please share with us, what's a typical day like in the life of a missionary of Charity Brother? We have to be up at six in the morning for morning prayer, which is about 45 minutes which is a half an hour of silence and 15 minutes of reciting the Liturgy of the Hours, followed by daily Mass, which is either inside our house or at the local parish church. And then we come and have breakfast and we work most of the day until about five o'clock when we have Holy Hour and we pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And then we have dinner and then a little work in the evening and we have night prayer. Is there anything you'd like to say to a young man who's perhaps watching the program who might be considering becoming a missionary of Charity Brother? Search your heart. See if the Lord is calling you to serve the poor, especially in the, the situation in the world where there are so many people suffering from poverty, not only physical, but especially emotional and spiritual poverty. Look around and see the world the way it is and, and ask the Lord, ask, ask your heart, is, could this be where the Lord is leading me? Brother Chris, what are some of the challenges that you've had? The greatest challenge that comes to my mind now is saying no to somebody in need because of my limitations. For example, if a family comes to our house and says they need money for rental assistance and we've already given our quota of rental assistance for the month, I have to tell them, I'm sorry, we can't help you this month you have to try some other church or agency. That really breaks my heart. However, I think through the years I'm growing in this, in, in having to say no, knowing that I'm not God, that God's in control of everything. I just need to grow in trusting the Lord that somehow the Lord will help these people. Uh, I can't do everything. What has enabled you to persevere for, is it now 17 years as a missionary? Uh, it'll be 19 this November. How have you done that? The only explanation is God. There's no other explanation. I never had an idea that I would be doing this type of, of work in ministry when I was a younger man. It's all God's grace. That's right, it's all grace. And we thank God for Mother Teresa and her missionary of charity community. And we thank God for you and your perseverance in doing something beautiful for God. Thank you so much, Brother Chris, for sharing with us. You're welcome.